always known him plain and simply as the coach of the cards. But now, ladies and gentlemen, I have to introduce to you Hall of Fame coach Denny Crum. This morning, we are remembering legendary U of L basketball coach Denny Crum. He died yesterday at the age of 86. He was a staple of the university's basketball program. He led the Cardinals to two NCAA championships. And in addition to the victories, his decorum and the compassion he dedicated to the program and his community put him above the rest. Sports director Ken Spencer gives us a look at Coach Crum's remarkable life and career. When Denny Crum walked into an arena, he carried with him a confidence, a calmness. It was why he was known as Cool Hand Luke. Because whenever I needed to do something, I did it. I can't remember ever him losing his cool or getting, um, you know, frustrated or really upset in the huddle. He was always like, okay, here's what we need to do. Crum came to Louisville in 1971 after being a longtime assistant at UCLA under his mentor, legendary coach John Wooden. It didn't take long for Crum to put the cards on the map, leading them to the Final Four in 1972 and 1975, and it was after that season his alma mater came calling after Wooden retired. He went out to UCLA. Uh, they wanted him. They offered him the job. He came back to Louisville. He had made up his mind he was going to take the job. Okay, this is right after 19. This is 75. He gets back to his office, and a friend of his, Gene Sullivan, called him. And Gene was a pro out at Wildwood. And he said, hey, Denny, we need a fourth. Can you come over and play? And that one phone call changed his mind. He stayed in Louisville. Now you ask, well, how, how could that happen? And he said, that didn't happen out in L.A. You know, it was really tough to get, you know, get a tea time for one thing and just go play. He said, only Louisville. And, and that changed his mind. Louisville National Champions 1980. The rest, they say, is history. Crum led Louisville to capture the 1980 National Championship. We still won it when it, the going got tough. We just hung in there, and I don't know how it happened, but it did. That was his first, so yeah, it's, that's special. It was special to this community, to our fans. It was the first. Crum would go on to win a second national title with Louisville in 1986. The wins, the milestones continued to pile up, and in 1994, he was inducted into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. But to me, it is truly very, very important. Now that you've placed me here among those who have played and coached the game with great success, I am honored and humbled beyond anything I could have imagined. Perhaps his biggest gift, his impact on people. Not many can take their biggest rival. Well, we asked Coach Hall. And, and he wouldn't give you an answer, would he? Well, he, he uh, tried to walk out in the interview, actually. Yeah, well, that's typical. And become the best of friends, like he did with Joe B. Hall. We had a good, close relationship that was uh, just like we'd known each other forever. It also goes without saying the lives he changed of those who suited up for him wearing Cardinal Red a message that remained the same over the years. To give to each other and to, to, to be a unselfish players. If they did that, then that would carry over to their lives as well. It was such a positive influence on us at such a young age. So when you have someone like that, okay, it's like a father figure, you know, or a big brother or, or you know, whoever. Um, type of person that can really make, make a difference in your life, have an impact on you. And he had an impact on me and, and all of us. In 2001, Crum stepped down and retired, but remained in Louisville. Throughout the years, he received countless deserving honors from the university and community he loved so much, and from those he once called a rival. One of the true icons of the game, and uh, someone that I've admired my entire life. No matter who comes and who goes, now and in the future for the Cardinals, Denny Crum will always be Louisville's coach. Current Louisville men's basketball coach Kenny Payne, who played for Crum in the 80s, 
said it's a sad day. My thoughts go through all the lessons that he taught, not just to me, but every player he ever came in contact with. We are so blessed to have him in our lives. He was a true treasure who gave so much to the university and the community. UofL is honoring Coach Crum around campus. This is a video from overnight. This is at the fountains outside of Grommeyer Hall, which is lit red. Just a few blocks away, the monitor boards at the UofL Field Hockey Complex show a picture of the coach reading in loving memory. WHS 11 Sports Director Ken Spencer and Doug Prophet reflect on Crum's legacy in the 30-minute special report, Denny Crum, A Hall of Fame Life. You can watch it right now on the WHAS 11 YouTube page. All right, we're coming up on 10 after the hour and some information just into our newsroom. And I want to read this deliberately because it can sound confusing, but there's been an arrest made in a shooting in South Louisville from one week ago today. Metro Police say 52-year-old Ja'Cory L. Harris was arrested in Newport, Kentucky. He's accused of shooting 30-year-old Ja'Cory Harris Jr on Nichols View Court across from Jacobs Elementary. Now those names are similar enough to the point where we're asking more questions to Metro Police. We know Ja'Cory L. Harris is charged with murder and possession of a handgun by a convicted felon. Also, a man was fatally shot in the Parkland neighborhood last night. This morning, police are looking for answers. This happened around 8.30 last night on Greenwood Avenue. When police arrived, they found a male victim who'd been shot at least once. As of this morning, police have not made any arrests. You are urged to call 574-LNPD if you have any information. The weapons detection system JCPS proposed took a big step forward. The system is designed to stop weapons from getting into schools. JCPS will now get bids from potential vendors. At a special meeting last night, JCPS decided to buy the system. It uses artificial intelligence to specifically look for things like guns and explosives on students without them having to remove jackets or backpacks. It will be monitored by a team of three people. One of those would be an armed officer. There are mixed feelings from some JCPS educators and community leaders who feel more data and alternatives need to be shared before the school makes a final decision. We want to know the data on how many guns are coming in the school. Uh, we need to know more before we just jump right to a vote. We're making our schools into fortresses with an AI weapons detection system and police a system that has not been proven to make schools safer. We do want to make sure every single lane has an individual from the school they're working that knows the children and can assist with that process. If the school board selects a vendor, the ordering process takes eight to 10 weeks. <laughs>